One of the first things that I want to do with my old box compared to my new box, this is some kind of a short shifter. So I'm going to take this off and take it with me because it was quite fun and it was a good little short shifter. It's just there. And we also have a new brass bush to put on the end of this so we can get rid of these little plastic things. As much as I want to open this box up and see how much damage we've done to second gear, I really cannot be bothered right now with 20 and I just want to get it done and over with and get the other box back in and get it driving. So I'm going to swap some stuff over on the other box, get this all prepped to go, including getting out the clutch fork and the throwout bearing, which is this guy here here. See all the water lines up here? These are all the little hellions that leak and break and split and it was a nightmare. You can see how hard they are to get to. Like, it's not fun. It's really not fun. And then you imagine there's a starter motor, right? Here. <laughs> so good luck. The one that we kept on losing uh, at the track was this guy here. So this one here split twice. It started leaking as well as these guys up here. You can see now these are the old clamps I was talking about that are really bad and that I want to replace and get rid of because they just cut into the hose. And you can see all this green stuff here where they've just been continuously leaking the entire time. This is my dump side. And you can see here we have the head drain kit. That's where the oil comes down from the head, all the excessive oil. And then this one here is the turbo return. So to do this, you can't do it in car. The motor has to be out of the car to be able to do this. And it's a very recommended thing to do in the RV world, especially if you drift or if you put your car through a lot of hardship. Let's call it hardship. Abuse. <laughs> Here is a good example of why we don't use these little guys anymore. The top one there, you can't control the tension, and that bottom one that was on there, again, not that, not the best. So this is the um, pot clutch. And this is how much clutch we have left. And water lines are now post clips. Post clips to the wazoo. So I found some differences with both of these gearboxes. This is one that's come out of my car. You can tell by the ready orange breather line. Now this is called an RB71C and it is hashtag number one. This is an RP71C hashtag one also. What this means is the hashtag one is the model 
whether it's a early model or late model kind of thing. Um, and the RB71C comes in the turbo models and the turbo models also have the red breather. But the NA model ones have RP71C uh, and they have a smaller breather hole, which you can see it's missing here. And I pulled the breather out of this and tried it a second ago. I'm like, oh wait, why is it different? And that is why. Uh, these are fairly similar because they both have quite a lot of ribbing. There is an early model of an RP71C that apparently doesn't have anywhere near as much ribbing. Some of these boxes are made in Japan and some of these boxes are made in Australia. Now, if you have a JDM box, you will not have a certain symbol on your box right here. If you have the kangaroo, it was made in Australia. If you don't have the kangaroo, ouch. Like both of these guys, and they're both manufactured in Japan. Uh, from what I can gather, some of the guys are saying the, the hashtag one and hashtag two. Hashtag one means single synchros and hashtag two apparently means double synchros or something. Some guys were talking about different gear ratios in the boxes also. Um, some were saying it's rumored that the RB71Cs have slightly stronger synchros than the RP71Cs. So yeah, that's some uh, interesting information for thought. So I'll let you know how it goes, but I am interested to know if it does change my gear ratio. Apart from the most obvious thing being the breather, the breather hole and uh, one of these sensors? No, not these sensors, okay. The biggest difference between these two boxes and the thing that kind of set off the alarm bells in the first place for me to bother looking was this little guy. So the RP71C box came with a electronic speedo sensor when it focuses, whereas the RB box uses a cable that's off the car, so yeah. That was a, a bit of a difference as well. So these sensors here, this is my neutral sensor on both of them. And this one here is your reverse light sensor. I had to check that just in case because I just looked at this one and this one's mounted. So I have to swap over my old one off my old box with my reverse lights into this new box here. So I have reversing lights. Um, Clutch forks and input shafts and all the all the others look identical, and I can't find any other differences with them. Uh, another one I have to do is change over my uh, gearbox bracket rubber. This one on my old box is fine, but the one on the new box is absolutely rooted, as you can see there. I don't know where this box has been. It looks like it's been sitting in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean with like a cloister nest or something in it. I don't know. The gearboxes are all swapped over and ready to go for, uh, let's go Monday. So it's Friday now, probably like one in the morning. So we'll come in first thing Monday morning and I'm gonna get this box back in the car. Benjamin's playing around with these new uh, R31. Have a guess what it's powered by. Can you hear it? Can you hear it? Ah, <laughs> it's, uh, I'll give you a clue. <laughs> um, it's not my car though, so uh, I won't show that just yet. But, but yeah, so oil change is done, filter's done, plugs are on Monday. We've done the water lines at the back of the head. Most of the stuff is done, just gearbox in uh, and welding on the Nismo muffler on the Monday, and we should be sweet. Kind of grab my car with dirty hands. Oh. <laughs> that is it for tonight, guys. Thank you so so much for watching. Apologies if this is in several parts. It's not just a simple 
oh, you know, I'm going to change this and it's done. There's quite a lot of work when it comes to cars and to do things properly, lubricate things properly, do things up to spec, like talk to spec, um, and just finding the right parts and making sure everything's going to work, especially under load and abuse. <laughs> so thank you guys so, so much for watching and I'll catch you guys next time. Have fun. Go to your skin. Thank you, Cole.